Well, that's a great way to start. Um, monkey as we're driving into the farm, um, probably about 35 to 40 meters away. Just popped him in the head of the 40 grand javelin. What I'm seeing here is a good sign. We, there's a lot of rain that's come here in the last few months. So the monkeys have had plenty of food. They've been able to reproduce over the past year. But now the rainy season's over. It's just starting to dry up a little bit, which means they'll have to be moving around to find food. So moving around is a good thing. It means we're gonna spot them. But let's keep an eye out, see if we can get some more. It has been more than a year since we filmed an Oxwagon Diaries episode. But we're about to get back at it with a bang as we hit a massive milestone. Episode number 40. I've been visiting Wittmoskloof for more than a decade and this series is really special because it sums up my journey as a shooter and as a person, with all the twists and turns along the way as I've grown and found my feet. The 2023 season, like every season before it, will showcase new gear, new locations and new skills. So stay tuned as we jump in the deep end and start off strong with a few monkeys in the bag straight away to tee off an amazing week of hunting. I didn't even have time to range there. I'm actually curious to see what the range was. I just held top of his head. Slug dropped in. So that Somebody was crossing the road in front there. 84 meters. One mil. So yeah, it would have dropped him into his back. Probably neck or shoulder blades. And yeah, let's keep going. And we've arrived. Woo, finally. Well, this is going to be our home for the next few nights. We do plan to camp up in the mountain maybe one or two nights as well. So we might not be here every night, but this will be the perfect home base. We've got shelter when the rain comes. Notice I'm not saying if, I'm saying when, but we're not going to be relaxing just yet. Uh, it's dead calm outside, so we're going to make the most of those conditions and get the air rifles out and just do some zero checks and shoot a few groups. They've got a nice air rifle range that they've built here, so let's go do that right now. So many guns, but not too many. There's no such thing as too many guns. Well, it's been almost 15 months, I think, since we were here last. It's over a year, which is actually insane. I think it's the longest time gap between Oxwagon Diaries episodes ever. Um, and it's a special episode. It's our 40th episode. I never thought I'd get to 40. Um, it's been years of, of coming out here and enjoying this place. It's basically been 10 years since I came here for the first time. And I think every, every year gets better. So they've built an air rifle range here. Uh, we've got targets from 25, 50, I think 75, all the way up to 100 meters. I'm actually going to be setting my guns up with a zero at 40 yards. And I'm going to be using yards for the next few days. The only reason for that is I want to start preparing for the competitions I'm shooting in the States in June and July. We'll shoot with a few of these guns, I'll introduce them as we go along, and we'll have some fun. Slight wind left to right, I'm going to hold point two. Oh, perfect. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm nicking that, I think it's like a one inch target there at, at 115. So very happy with that. That's a dead monkey every day of the week. This is FX Impact M3. We've got a 300 bar 580cc bottle on here, which gives us plenty of shots. We've got 800 millimeter 22 caliber barrel, one in 14 twist, shooting 40 grand javelins at 1,015, 1,020 feet per second. We've got a reflex silencer on here, which keeps it relatively quiet, but still really short. Uh, Sabre tactical bag rider. And then of course, Element Theos on top. Eagle Vision mag at the back, uh, re cycles reliably with his heavy slugs, and yeah, it's just an awesome magazine, works great. And then we've got the Pantera, which you may not think is a, is a hunting gun, and technically, I would say the Impact's probably the better setup for hunting, which is why we're gonna use it most of the time. But there are some very close similarities to NRL 22 slash precision rifle shooting, and hunting animals like monkeys, which require shots to be taken quickly at unknown distances. And so I think that 
the gun that I shoot competition with is probably going to be the gun that I feel most comfortable taking shots off, you know, opticals like trees and fence poles and stuff like that, which is why I want to get some footage with this gun. You'll notice that I've left two weights on the front here. Normally in competitions, I would run like four or six weights just to balance it perfectly, but I want this to be sort of a hybrid setup where it's not as heavy as a competition rig would be, but I'm still getting that same feel. So we've kept the scar pod on the front, MBT scar pod, and we haven't fitted a full length silencer. We've actually just got two little pieces of the kind of generic FX modular silencer. That's just to quiet the gun up enough to hunt with it. Um, but I want to still keep it short. I want to keep it similar length to having competition. So it might bark a little bit, but I'm actually pretty pleasantly surprised about how quiet it is. And then uh, on top here, we've got the Nexus Gen 2, which is also an absolute beast of a scope. Um, really excited to hunt with a scope again. Um, so let's pop the scope cam on. Uh, we've got 40 grand javelins going 990 feet per second out of this gun. And let's see what we can do with it, shall we? We're probably gonna launch the Element Ballistics app next week. Right now when we're filming, it's May 2023. So this app will be out for a while by the time you see this. 40 yard zero. Let's go 111 yards. And it's telling me three mils up. Should be nice and easy to remember. And last, as far as air rifles go, but certainly not least, um, this is the other Impact M3, the little guy. 600 millimeter barrel, shooting 26 grand javelins at about a thousand feet per second. Little 300 cc uh, bottle, uh, Fox reflex silence on front. But I think the best part of this gun is this, this new scope. This is the uh, Element Immersive Series 5x30. It's got an awesome reticle in it, the LPR, uh, LPR 2D reticle. Let's quickly check our zero at 40 with the red dot and the scope, and then we'll move out to 100. Oh, perfect. Same spot. And with the red dot, let's turn it on. <laughs> That's awesome. In a ballistic app, if I go to the profile for this gun, Impact 600 is what I've called it. We've got the Javelin Gen 2 slug, 26 grain in there, velocity, sight height, weather, all that stuff. On the reticles tab, I can choose the LPR 1D MRAD, and there it's gonna tell me at 111 or whatever, I'm gonna go basically three mils. Happy with that? So that's this impact done. And of course we have the centerfire rifles. First up the 260 Remington. This is a Savage Model 12 VLP topped off with a Helix HDLR which I've fitted with a trigger cam to capture some scope cam footage. And I'll be shooting the 95 grain VMAXs at 3400 feet per second. That's a brutal setup for vomiting. Although I do want to have the 143 grand ELDXs on standby, just in case we need to shoot big animals. And I take my time to make note of point of impact shift between these two loads, in case I need to switch it up later. Man, it's been basically a year since I've used this 22250 for anything, which is too long. Perfect. It's like within one click, so. I'm gonna call it there. That poor little gong of mine is peppered with tiny little divots now from these high speed bullets getting stuck into it, but at least we know where our zero is, so. Yep, happy with that. And uh, that's all our rifles done and dusted, ready for the monkeys. Well, I tell you what, it's an absolute stunner of a day today, and we've still got a few hours of sunlight left. So, with the gun set up, 
there's no other option right now other than to hit the road let's see if we can uh, find some troops of monkeys maybe even a dassey or two in the afternoon light and see if we can get something down i think it would be good to tick, tick those off the list on day one stick with us it's going to be fun just as we we're about to leave camp i spot a troop of monkeys running into the river valley and i'll very quickly bring out the impact to see if i can get one down see him there <laughs> oh my goodness <sighs> guys <laughs> oh my word we were just leaving the camp just leaving the camp like this is the gate to the camp the camp is right there and there's a whole troop of monkeys that I spotted here as I was opening opening this gate I think they wanted to come and like check out if what we were doing at the camp, maybe steal some food or whatever, you know, the normal mischievous monkey stuff. I saw this monkey standing up there, rested on this fence pole, and I held two moles over because I'm, you know, I'm just guessing that he's about 100 meters away or 100 yards away. So I think I nailed him. I saw a lot of uh, fur, like silver fur in the sun. So let's take a walk down there and see if we can find him, shall we? Before we even begin to look for the monkey I just shot, we sneak in towards the river below, hoping that the rest of the troop might still be within range. The thicker vegetation around the river makes it really hard to spot monkeys, but it may also make it easier for us to get within air gun range. Unfortunately, on this occasion, they get away. They're gone. Well, as you can see, the grass is, is pretty long here. We've spent about five minutes looking for that monkey, but um, I don't want to waste time. We've got a few hours of sunlight left. And we saw that whole troop run off that way. So uh, we'll maybe look for this one later. I definitely blitzed him in the head. I just checked that footage. It looked awesome. But we're not going to spend our time looking for him right now. Let's keep going and see if we can get a few more, shall we? Not far up the valley, we spot some ground squirrel holes and set up in a nice spot overlooking them, hoping that they'll eventually come out. The Pantera is a joy to shoot off a tripod, and when we do eventually spot one, it doesn't stand a chance. 1.6 moles. Dead. <laughs> there you go guys 81 yards panthera off the tripod perfect shot 81 yards on the head this isn't quite the same as shooting off a off a barricade um obviously this this leo photo um tripod here with the arca section here it's a little bit more rigid than shooting off a bag but man, it's awesome. You just find where you need to be, lock it in place and shoot. Excellent. We keep an eye out for more ground squirrels and when another appears, it's a repeat of the previous shot. It's another one out, yeah. And it's not over yet. A third ground squirrel stands up and I'm able to put him down also. Okay, there's one there, 78 yards. 1.5. I'm sure you'll come out. There you go. Yeah. Oof, just over him. Dead. 78 yards, 1.5 mils. So I took one shot, just shot over him. Saw the dust moving off a bit from right to left, held accordingly, nailed him. This place is teeming with ground squirrels. I think that the, the insane rain we've had over the past two years has probably just given them so much food that they've been able to breed like crazy. And now we're reaping the rewards of that. So I think the next few days between the monkeys and the ground squirrels, oh man, that's going to be busy. 
that's awesome let's stick around here another few minutes see if we can get a few more but i want to save the rest for tomorrow when we can actually come here sit down properly behind the tripod get really steady and just wait it out right now we're kind of in front of the truck they can see we're here not the best setup so let's give it five more minutes and see what happens but so far panthera nexus gen 2 what an awesome setup well wow there's actually two here one two this was the second one i believe and this was the third one we started today with the goal of basically just arriving at camp checking the guns and winding down for the evening but with it starting to dry out now uh, with the rainy season over and starting to go into the dry season the animals are all out looking for food so um, they've had a couple of years to breed and gain numbers and like get their populations back after that crazy 10 year drought we struggled to get them last time we came here just because it was so green and thick but today we've managed to get a few monkeys down and have ended off the day with a couple ground squirrels this one was the last shot i took um, with the panthera and both his eyes are completely gone so yeah um you know he poked out the hole i missed just over the top of him corrected for it and yeah you could see in the slow-mo what happened there to him <laughs> looks like sandy the squirrel from spongebob with his eye popping out and then we got one more down there so yeah three squirrels let's go get the first one jeez that's a that's definitely a male and it looks like i just actually nicked his neck or passed through his neck but that would have put him down on the spot great way to end the day The first night at camp is always special. For us, it's an opportunity to put the guns away and really just soak in the colors, the sounds and the smells around us as the stars come out and the fire crackles away. This is the 40th Oxwagon Diaries episode, which is it's just mind blowing, it's crazy. Um, and it wouldn't be fair to just sum up the day because we've got almost 10 years of epic hunting episodes uh, that we can look back on and, and reminisce about. It's, it's pretty crazy that we've come out here year after year and seemingly sort of done the same thing over and over again, you know, hunting monkeys, hunting ground squirrels. Uh, you could call it boring, but when I started here, I was in high school and, and the equipment I've used has evolved a lot since I first started coming out here. I came, I came here at first with a little 177 Air Arms S510 shooting an 8.4 grain pellet and look at where we are today we're shooting heavy slugs that are giving us rimfire performance match rimfire accuracy but most of all I, I just have always appreciated coming back to my roots every time I come back here learning to sit back and appreciate the you know the stars and the smell of the fire and quality time with friends yeah, that's really what the Oxwagon Diaries is about. It's not a, a shooting show, it's a lifestyle show. It's about the lifestyle of hunting, the lifestyle of being out in the bush. We're gonna celebrate by doing what we've done in every other episode. We've had an awesome day of hunting, we've shot some monkeys, shot some ground squirrels. We're gonna hang out here with, with Kutsia, maybe even crack, crack open a bottle of champagne to celebrate. Let's see where this goes.
So for dinner tonight, we have some uh, corn on the cob with uh, butter and some herbs and spices down below by the coals. And then you've got pork neck sasatis on top and you've got chicken sasatis. And then of course we've got the homemade bread inside as well. So we pretty much covered. Um, it's going to be a good dinner. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time. In the next episode, we'll be jumping straight in the action once again as we put the hammer down on the monkeys with both the air guns and the sacrifice. We'll also get a few dussies down off the cliff sides and take time to enjoy the amazing scenery around us. Please subscribe if you want to see more and we'll catch you then.